Welcome to my lecture online. To see how the three methods work on a small data set, we've changed things just slightly from the previous video. We've added one more data point in our data set, and therefore now our have value falls over here, and our first quartile range still is in this particular region, but let me explain. There are now 13 data points, so if we think of this as being the point where the first quartile files, then what percentage of the data points fall to the left, and what percentage of the data points fall to the right? Let's find out. So here we have 3 out of 13, 3 divided by 13, which means that 23% of the data points are to the left of that boundary, and to the right, we now have, let's see, uh, 12, that's a 3, 6, 9, 10, so 10 out of 13 data points, or 77% of all the data points fall to the right. So you can see that clearly the 25% point still falls between 5 and 7, which is something that we need for method number 3. But now let's again think about how to approach this. Method number one says that the first quartile is a number such that at most one quarter of the data are smaller in value and, because it's an end condition, they both must be true at the same time, at most three quarters of the data are larger in value. All right, let's see here. If we pick five, let's go through that process again. If we pick five, condition number one, we would have two out of well, let's see here, 2 out of 13 that are smaller. So 2 divided by 13 that are smaller, which is 15%. That means that 15% is smaller. And notice, at most a quarter, which is 25%, must be smaller, so it meets that condition. So when we pick 5, at least it meets the first of the two conditions. How about the second condition? If we pick 5, then 10 out of 13 are outside, and of course 10 out of 13 is 77 percent. So that means 77 percent is larger, and that violates the rule because at most it must be 3 quarters, which is 75 percent. Because of this second one, we cannot pick 5. 5 is no longer a legitimate value for the first quartile if there's 13 data points. How about number 7? So pick 7. And if we do that, then 3 out of 13, which is 23%, is smaller. 23% is smaller. And that meets the condition that it cannot be more than 25%. And secondly, to the right, there would be 9 out of 13. 9 divided by 13, which is 69%. 69% is larger. And that also meets the second condition because it cannot be more than 75%. Since both A and B are met, 7 is the right pick. So for method number 1, 7 represents the first quartile, no longer 5 like we saw in the previous video. How about the method 2? So we're going to take 1 quarter, the number data points, which is 13 plus 1, and that would be the position of the Q1, quartile 1. So this would be equal to 1 quarter of 14, which is 14 divided by 4, which is 3.5. Wow, it's exactly halfway between the third and the fourth point. So in that case, 5 or 7 have an equal value. So for that reason, method number 2 will give you either 5 or 7 as a proper value that meets the condition because this is right halfway in between 5 and 7. All right. The third method says you take the average of the two numbers on either side of the 1 quarter, 3 quarter boundary, which is still between the two right there. Since the boundary is still between the two, 23 and 77, 25 falls right in between, we can take the average. So it would be 5 plus 7 divided by 2 which is equal to 12 divided by 2, which is equal to 6. Then with method 3, 6 would still be quartile, uh, quartile 1, first quartile. And so you can see now things have changed a little bit. Method 1 gives you only one possibility as being the correct value. Method 2 gives you two possible values. And method 3 still gives you the same average value between 5 and 7. And that's how it's done when we have 13 data points. 
I wonder what it looks like with 14 data points. Let's do one more, add one more data point to see what happens now. And that is how it's done.